All right, so today we're going to be learning about something new. It's called arrays. Um, uh, an array, yeah, we can turn off the light. An array uh, is something that, uh, this is like the last like main programming item that we haven't learned yet. Uh, after this, it's more about like how to integrate them. Like, you know, this is like if statements or variables. I mean, this is like a big important element that we haven't learned yet. And this is really the last one. Um, so today we're going to learn about how to declare arrays and how to write and read from arrays. They're a lot like variables, you can see. So there's actually only two units left for this whole class. We're going to learn arrays. And the next thing we're going to learn is going to be called string manipulation, which is just like working with strings, like making things uppercase or lowercase, or like getting pieces of a string, uh, stuff like that. Uh, and then we're done. Uh, after that, we're going to work on a big game design. And uh, for most of the fourth quarter, we're just going to be working on a game design. Have a seat. I want to introduce right here before I see in a second. OK. And so, uh, actually, Mr. Carl, you know what you're supposed to be working on, right? Yeah. OK. Um, so that's it. There's only two units left. We're going to do arrays right now. The next one is string manipulation. And then for the fourth quarter, for most of the fourth quarter, we're going to be working on designing a game on your own. You get to pick the game. It's up to you, what, what you want to do. Uh, it's not just going to be like, all right, go, and you'll be done. There'll be steps that you have to complete. And you're going to learn something new as a part of the game you're trying to create. Uh, on your own. So we'll, we'll, we'll discuss that as we get closer. And what's really interesting is that when the games are all done uh, next year, all the games will be on the, the computers in the learning commons. Yeah. And so, you know, in like a folder in the start menu, like start menu, like yeah. computer science games 2011. And so, like, people can see the ones you made. So you better make it good. Because, yeah. And so, you know, you better make it good so people say, like, oh, did you play Xavier's game? It's crazy. Yes. Uh, okay. It's not, yeah, right. Anyway, that's just an idea. Shh. Okay, so today we're going to learn about arrays. We're going to learn about arrays. We'll talk about how to declare an array, how to read and write from them, uh, and then I'll show you an example or two. Okay, ready? Let's do it. So an array is uh, it's kind of like a variable. So up until now, we've been using these variables to store and manipulate information, right? Like, so for example, let's say you have some variable called counter. You could say counter equals zero, right? And that means that the number zero is now stored in counter. Are you with me on that? Yeah. That's old news, right? Or, or, or for example, like if you have some variable called save number, you can say that save number is equal to itself plus one, and that makes it go up by one, right? Oh, again, old news. Of course, we can have variables that are strings, and they can store text. Right now, we, we, many people probably have a variable called direction in their, in their project that controls whether the ball is moving to the right or to the left, right? This is just a variable that stores a string called right, OK? And remember, way back in the beginning when we talked about this, and we're probably about, probably about to watch this lecture, I originally. <laughs> way back in the day. What's that? Uh, the, the, a variable can kind of, you can kind of think of a variable as like a box inside a computer. That's something that information gets stored inside, right? So here's this box, and I want to put like a number inside it. It's just kind of like a little place, a little personal. It's like, you know, your little box inside the computer where you can store stuff, right? We know this, right? Old news. Okay, and then later you can get that 22 back out if you want it, right? Okay. Uh, or you can also put text in like that. Okay, and yeah, like you can read, so, so let me say that again. So you, can, you get this box, you create the box by, who can tell me how you like make the box in the first place? No, not a text box. The text box isn't a variable. What? Yeah, declare it. You say dim, you know, my variable as da, da da right? And then that creates the box. You can put stuff into it by saying, you know, my variable equals right. And you can get stuff out of it by saying something else equals my variable, right? And that takes information out, right? OK. Yeah. Mishai, what are you doing? Yeah, OK. Just ask. You, have to like, or you, you, you can also stand up. Somebody lend Mishai to him. Who's got it? Whoop! All right. Nice work. OK. So, the question that I'm, that I'm posing here, and it's the question that, that uh, arrays are going to solve for us, is what if we need a lot of data, right? What if we want to store five different numbers instead of just one? Right, so like, for example, let's say we had a program that had like five text boxes, and we wanted to press this button and have it add all them up. Okay, right, for now, and this is the way we have been doing things, uh, if you wanted to use, you might have to use five separate variables, right? You'd have to say like dim number one as an integer, dim number two as an integer, dim number three as an integer, you know what I mean? You have to make five separate little boxes, okay? And you'd set them each equal to the text boxes and then add all of them up individually like that, right? Does that make sense so far? 
right? So right now we don't have the tools to do that kind of repetitive storage, or or or, or you have to create all these different. But what if you had ten thousand numbers that you had to store, okay, in one at once? Would you guys want to sit there and dim ten thousand individual? No, I, I, I do. Right, just copy and paste ten thousand times. And if you did it one uh, once a second, it would take you three hours. Well, just okay. do I do. I use Microsoft Excel, and that's how you did. That's, that's good. Right, that's that's one. Very smart. Very smart. Okay. Anyway, we should be more focused on those stuff. Yeah, I mean, okay. 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 Good. All right. So arrays are these new things that we have that are going to help us to do this. They're kind of like variables, but they, instead of just having one box, they got lots of boxes. So this is our original variable direction, which we can store like right inside, right? But now we're going to learn about something called arrays. Which is one thing, like this array is called students, okay? But it actually has multiple places that you can store stuff in, so you can have all kinds of different people in there, okay? Does that make sense? Okay. Got it? Okay, we'll talk about how this works in a second. But the idea is I, I'm not gonna make students one, students two, students eight. I have just students, okay? But I can hold multiple pieces of information. It's like, it's like a multi variable, okay? Uh, and like I said, this can be really powerful, especially if you have a lot of data, right? If you need to store 10,000 numbers, then you can use one array to do that, and then use something like a loop or something like that to do, do the operation to all of the pieces of the array. Okay, so let's talk about declaring arrays briefly, and then I'll talk about how to actually use them. Okay, so declaring an array is almost exactly like declaring a variable. You start, uh, you can do it globally, remember, at the very top, and that means that you can use the array anywhere. You can do it locally, inside a subroutine, that means you can just use it in that subroutine. That's the same with variables. Basically, everything is the same. What's the difference between this and, and a variable, though? What's, what's, what's different? It's got this six with the parentheses there. You see that? Yeah. Okay, so just in your mind, now you're thinking, whenever I'm using arrays, I've got it, after the end of the name of the variable, there's a parentheses with a number inside of it. So array yeah. number. Well, so so if I say dim student six as a string, I'm going to make an array, and it's going to have mad boxes, much more than just one. It's going to have six. actually seven. So an array is a uh, box. No, a, array is a set of boxes with one name. So that tall thing of boxes from here a second ago. That was an array. That was an array. Okay, it's a bunch of different places where you can store variables. So it just has one name. It's called students. This one would be students with a three inside it. I'll show you why it's three and not four. Okay, so this is an example of that. But I could also do, you know, I could do a decimal array, okay, and this one has 101 uh, spots inside of it, okay? Okay, so uh, the way that you declare them is exactly the same. You have this dim thing, which, uh, okay, this is where you go. Okay, yeah, the dim statement, which, which just starts it, it says, hey, I'm declaring something. Then you have the name of the array. You've got this thing in here, which is the last element. I'll explain what that means in a second. And then, of course, you have the, the as and then the data type at the end, just the same. It'd be really cool. What? Okay. Um, it'd be really cool if you could have arrays of like lots of different types of stuff, where, like the first one is a string and the second one is a decimal and stuff like that. You can't do that. So the whole array has to have the, the same data type. Okay, so basically it's the same. Okay, you still need to name your, your array just like you'd name a variable. The only difference is these parentheses with the number inside. You got me? We'll talk about the number in a second. All right, so depending on how you declare the array, you can have as many elements as you want or you need, okay? So that's how many boxes there are in the single array. So uh, I made this picture here on the left side, which says, um, you know, you can have up to, can you even read that? It says element zero, element zero, element, element zero, element one, element two, all the way up to element n, as many elements as you want. n is like in general, right? It could be 100, it could be a million, okay? In, the, in the, the, the BMS, right, the online detention system, right, I use arrays extensively. You have to download all the data from a, a database and has every student's name, every student's homeroom, every data, and I use an array for each of those, okay? You use visual basic? No, you can't do visual basic online. Okay, so, um, so, so this, number inside there when you declare it is the number for the final element. So in other words, if I put 100 in here, I'm going to start at element 0, I'm going to go all the way up to 100. Does that make sense? C. So does, do you see why it's 101 oh, then? Yeah. Because 0 counts. C. Okay, so if I say my number of 6, that means it has 7 boxes, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So it's got 7 little places that I can store data inside. Make sense? 
So you can win life for okay. one. What's that? Okay. Yeah, so you do one less or one more, right? So in here you put one less number than, than the total number of things you put. So if you want seven boxes, you put six in there because you have zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's seven numbers. Okay. Okay. I don't know why that says examples. It shouldn't say examples. Okay, so let, what, how do you use an array? Okay. How do you use it? So writing to array is just like writing to a variable, right? For a variable, you have a box, and you can say my variable equals 12, and then the data gets put in there, right? Mm -hmm. For an array, it's exactly the same, okay? You just have to say which of the elements you want to store something in. So, uh, so if I say my array of 3 is 39, okay, let's say that my array looked like this in the beginning, okay? This is element 0, 1, 2, 3. Well, the third box, I'll put 39 in there and replace whatever's there. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. It's just like writing to a variable. The only difference is you have to tell it which of the boxes you want it to go in. And since I said three, zero, one, two, three, right, it went into the third box. So, do we ever get to see these imaginary boxes? No. Try. Yeah. Is there something in my box already? <laughs> no. Yeah. So if you just declare it, they're all empty, just like a variable's empty. So, so you put you something in there. Every time you declare a variable, well, let's say, so they're all empty right now, right? Yeah. And then you say uh, on array by put five. Right. All the ones before that fill out with numbers before it? No, everything will be blank except for the fifth one. That's a really good question. So when you first declare the array, it'll be empty, just like a variable, right? If you just say dim direction as string, what does it start as? Nothing. Nothing. It, it, I think if you ask to read it, it'll just come out as like blank. Okay? And it's the same thing true for uh, an array. If you declare an array, but you don't put anything in it, then it's just blank or empty. Okay? But in this case, I said, let's say I put a bunch of numbers in there somewhere else in the program. Okay, and then I say this. Okay, then whatever's there will get replaced. Got it? Just like a, it's the same with the variable. Okay. Uh, so let me just talk about this number thing. This number thing in here is called the index. Okay, it's a lot of new new terms here. We've got array, the element, which is sort of each box, and the index. Okay, and it makes sense that it's called an index because it's the number that tells you which one you want to go to, right? So what does the index do in the back? You like look up the thing and it tells you which page to go to, right? It's the same idea. You, you, this, this index, six, tells me I'm going to the sixth element of the array, okay? So that's called the index. It tells I'm going to the sixth element of that sixth box of the array. Does that make sense so far? That's called the index. Yeah, hit me. What if you put zero instead of six? You say it's the zeroth element of the array. <laughs> right, but it's, it's like, the first, they but it's the yeah. zero. Do they go to the negative, though? No, you can't have negatives. Good question. Okay, so, but th that's a really good question, right? The, the situation with zeros can be really tricky. Peace. That's fine. Peace. Okay, so, all right. There are a lot of different ways that different people are going away. There's a lot of different ways that some programming languages do the array thing with the zero, and some of them are better and some of them are worse. I think Visual Basic is kind of neutral. C is really confusing for C++, and Java is similarly confusing. Uh, I really like the way PHP does it, which is why I like web coding so much. Anyway, different programming languages, different ways of handling these arrays and the, and the, the lowest one. Some of them have the lowest one as one, okay? Some of them have the lowest one as zero. VB has zero as the last one. And that can be kind of confusing, right? Because it's like seven terms goes from zero to six. Seven elements, that is, goes from zero to six. That's a little confusing. Um, in VB, again, the lowest index is zero. So if I say dim students four as a string, that's actually five elements, right? Because it's zero, it's four, three, two, one, and zero. Don't forget about zero. You got me? Okay, so if I say students one is Xavier, then it's not the first one that gets the zero, it's the first. Okay, so one way to kind of think about the way this could work. Oh, right. What did you say? Yeah, I know. It's, good. it's very easy to make this mistake. So one way to think about it, uh, about what this index does, is you can kind of think of like there's this giant, you know, set of boxes, right?